So we've done two, uh, two pro thermal processes so far. We talked about an isobaric process and an isochoric process. We're going to introduce two more, isothermal and adiabatic. And that'll be the end of the story for these thermal processes. What's isothermal? Well, you might uh, be able to guess that one. Iso means same. Thermal means temperature. So an isothermal process is one that is carried out at a constant temperature. And we're supposed to state the work done by an ideal gas during an isothermal process. Well, um, what is an isothermal process anyway? If you take a metal container, metals are good thermal conductors, and then you put it in um, hot water at a particular temperature, and you keep that hot water flowing around this container, and you maintain that temperature of the hot water, then as you um, increase the volume, for example, so you can push down on this with your hand and then uh, reduce the pressure slowly, bringing it up so that the the, the pressure of this will, will um, push the top surface up. Then uh, during that process, you maintain the same temperature all the way around. Then that'll give you a good approximation for an isothermal process. Temperature doesn't change. It's maintained by that, that hot water bath. Well, the pressure versus volume can be determined from the ideal gas law. And we've actually, um, whereas for the last two, we, hadn't, we didn't specialize to ideal gases. On this one, we are specializing to ideal gases. There's the ideal gas law. But if we want to plot the pressure, we'll have to divide both sides of this equation by the volume. So uh, the pressure, how does it vary with volume V? Well, the pressure, if N and R and T are, are all constants, uh, and T is a constant, we, that's what we mean by isothermal, then the pressure goes like 1 over V. So this is going to look like a hyperbola. As V goes to 0, the pressure goes to infinity. And as V goes to infinity, the pressure goes to 0. So this is a hyperbola, much more complicated than uh, the last two processes that we've talked about. So it looks like this. To find the actual area under this requires uh, integral calculus. It's not a hard calculation, um, but we're going to integrate dv divided by v, and that's a logarithm. And but if you didn't know that, then this is the basic result. The, the work done is going to be the integral of p dv. And p is nRT divided by v. And the integral of dv over v is just log v. But this is the result. The nRT comes along for the ride. Uh, and then we evaluate that logarithm at the final versus the initial. So the work done will be if. Uh, and this is a log base E, not a log base 10, um, normally written as, as LN, natural logarithm. If VF is greater than VI, meaning it's an expansion, the final volume is greater than the initial volume, then v, v, f over vi will be greater than 1, and log of something that's greater than 1 is greater than 0. And so for an expansion, for an isothermal expansion, we'll uh, get a positive amount of work done by the system. You can have also an isothermal contraction where the final volume is less than the initial volume. So that would be where the final volume is down here, and we're moving in that direction. In that particular case, you'll get a negative amount of work done. That'd be the case where instead of letting that um, 
this movable piston move up, you're going to smash it down and decrease the volume. And in that case, the gas does a negative amount of work. All right, do an example, uh, two moles of argon, that's an ideal monatomic gas. Expand isothermally at 298K. So the temperature's not changing. It stays at 298K. From an initial volume uh, to a final volume. Find the, net, find the work done by the gas, the change in the internal energy, and the heat added. Work done is easy. We already have a formula for it. We've got uh, two moles, 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin, 298K, the constant temperature, times the logarithm of the ratio of those two volumes, gives 3,400 joules. Uh, the change in the internal energy, how do we do that? Well, concept 1410 says that the internal energy is 3 halves nRT for an ideal monatomic gas. The change in the energy uh, is just like we worked out a couple of examples ago, 3 halves nRT final minus 3 halves nRT initial, and, um, and then the, okay. <laughs> so I was a little confused there, but the final temperature, how does that relate to the initial temperature for an isothermal process? And you say, they're the same, aren't they? Because it's isothermal, and I say yes. So if the final temperature is equal to the initial temperature, then this term is exactly the same as that term, and there's no change in the internal energy for an isothermal process. That you can take to the bank. Uh, there's no change in internal energy for an isothermal process. And that could be an isothermal expansion or contraction. There's no change in the internal energy. Well, if the change in internal energy is zero, this is zero, and Q therefore has to equal W. So there must have been, in order to keep that temperature the same, during the expansion from 0.025 cubic meters to 0.05 cubic meters, in order to keep that internal energy the same, you must have had to add some heat to it because otherwise, um, and this is the amount of heat that you had to add in order to keep that temperature the same. And so that goes back to this, um, this thing here. These, r these red uh, squiggly arrows indicate the heat that's being added to the system in order to keep the temperature the same and not let it cool off as it expands. Let's talk about an adiabatic process. An adiabatic process, so this, rel this relates to the adiabatic walls that we talked about. Adiabatic walls are walls that don't allow heat to flow through them, so well insulated. An adiabatic process is one that's carried out without any heat flow. So same idea as adiabatic walls. So we put an insulating material here. We put a whole bunch of household insulation around the outside here. And you guys would do a lab um, with, with this kind of using styrofoam as an insulating material. So the idea now with adiabatic is that there's no heat that enters or leaves the system. The system's in here. And you're not going to permit any heat to go in or out. So how do you find the work done by the system? Well, it's a complicated curve. Um, here are two isotherms for the initial and the final temperatures. Uh, these blue curves are isothermal lines uh, where the pressure goes like 1 over the volume and the temperature is constant. This red curve is 
is what the adiabatic curve looks like. And its shape is complicated, and I'm not going to get into it. Uh, but how do you find the area under that curve in order to find the work done? And that is actually easy. If there's no heat flow into or out of the system, then the heat added to the system is zero. And the first law, the law of thermodynamics says that delta U is the, just the negative of the work. Well, I can turn that around and say that the work is the negative of delta U. And if it's an ideal monatomic gas, which it is, then I have that minus sign, the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy. And so this minus sign just comes along for the ride. And we know that the internal energy for an ideal monatomic gas is 3 halves nRT. And so there you go. There's the work done for an adiabatic process. So this is um, a sudden adiabatic expansion. Um, where you all of a sudden open a hole between a region where there's a, a gas on the left side but no gas on the right side, and it expands to fill that, that volume. This is a, we'll talk about reversibility later, this is an irreversible process, um, but there, and it, and it, it goes, it, it happens over a very short period of time, but there's no heat or lost or gained, uh, no heat shared with the surroundings at all. Here's another example of an adiabatic, so this, this is actually an adiabatic expansion where you're, you're allowing this gas to expand into a compartment to the right, and here's a demo for an adiabatic compression. And as you can see, an adiabatic compression can have a very, uh, large increase on the temperature. This is a demonstration of adiabatic heating. Adiabatic heating is the mechanism whereby diesel engines ignite their fuel. The piston fits inside of a hollow cylinder and during the compression cycle of the piston, the volume decreases rapidly in the cylinder. When the volume decreases, the pressure increases and the temperature also increases rapidly. So the idea is with ad what adiabatic means is there's no heat lost or heat exchanged between the interior of the cylinder and the outside world. As long as this happens quickly, then that will, that will hold true. There won't be any heat uh, exchanged. So what I'm going to do is put a little piece of tissue paper in here and then put the plunger at the top position, screw down this housing, and then attempt to plunge this uh, fast enough to, to ignite the, the tissue paper. And I see a little burn mark in there, and there's a little bit of smoke, which you may be able to detect in there. Pull this out. And fish it out. Sure enough, it's, uh, a little bit of burn mark on the tissue paper. And it definitely smells burnt. So we succeeded in, in at least burning a little bit of this tissue paper using adiabatic heating.